Hello everyone, so today I'm going to start with the CNS pathology and today's topic is cerebral edema, hydrocephalus and herniation. So before starting the topic, make sure you have subscribed my channel. Okay, so let's begin. Cranium encases brain, blood and CSF and if any one of them is too much, it can cause the increased intracranial pressure. What is CPP? CPP is the cerebral perfusion pressure and it tells how brain is perceiving blood. And it is obtained by subtracting the intracranial pressure from the main arterial pressure. One more important thing is ICP has nothing to, or sorry, in, um, intracranial pressure has nothing to do with the uh, blood pressure. Blood pressure forces blood into the brain and intracranial pressure squishes it back out. So if the intracranial pressure is too high, it can impair blood flow and brain and can cause the brain ischemia. So what are the causes of increased intracranial pressure? Let's begin with the cerebral edema. What is cerebral edema? It is the accumulation of excess fluid within the brain parenchyma. It has two types, intracellular and extracellular. Intracellular, also known as the cytotoxic cerebral edema, and extracellular, also known as the vasogenic. So the intracellular uh, means that the fluid moves into the cells from the interstitium. And it is caused by either due to the exposure of the certain toxins or due to the generalized hypoxic or ischemic injury. So let's begin with this toxin one. If there is hyponatremia in the body, it leads to the decreased extracellular osmolality and in turn, um, the water is drawn into the brain cells. And if there is hypoxic injury to the cell, there is damage to the brain cells, which is, which is actually caused by a damage to the sodium potassium ATPase. And this leads to the intracellular sodium accumulation. And again, the water is drawn into the brain cell causing the cerebral edema. One more important thing here is that on imaging, you can see a loss of gray-white differentiation. What is white matter? White matter is, uh, is present deep in the brain. It is less dense due to myelin content and uh, it is actually dark. The white matter is dark. And the gray matter, it is uh, composed of the cell bodies and it is denser and it appears lighter. So uh, there is a clear-cut differentiation in the, uh, on imaging uh, between the white matter and the gray matter in the periphery. So the loss of this differentiation on imaging is seen in the intracellular edema. Okay, so next is the extracellular or vasogenic. It is, it is actually due to the disruption in the blood-brain barrier that leads to the leaky channels and allows fluid to move outside. And important pathology, uh, pathogenesis here is that uh, there is uh, increased vessel permeability that leads to the leakiness. Okay, so what are its causes? It can be it can occur due to head trauma, brain tumors, or meningitis, any inflammation like um, encephalo, encephalo what? Okay, so um, on imaging, uh, you can see gray white differentiation because it, it it remains intact in the extracellular one. So this was all about the cerebral edema. So next is the hydrocephalus. Before starting hydrocephalus, you must know the little bit of its anatomy. Uh, you all know CSF is made in the choroid plexus. And uh, after being produced by the choroid plexus, uh, the CSF regulates, uh, circulates through the ventricular system and flows through the foramen of Lushka and foramen of Majendi into the subarachnoid space. And uh, there it is reabsorbed by the arachnoid granulations. What are arachnoid granulations? These are actually the projection of arachnoid matter into the dural venous sinus. So this was a little bit of its anatomy. Uh, now, what is hydrocephalus? Hydrocephalus is increase in the volume of CSF within the ventricular system. And it is actually the balance between the rates of generation and resorption that regulates the CSF volume. Okay, so let's begin with the types of hydrocephalus communicating and non-communicating. The communicating hydrocephalus occurs due to the dysfunction of the arachnoid granulation. Arachnoid granulation, I've already told you, these are the projections of the arachnoid matter into the dural venous sinus. And dysfunctioning of the arachnoid granulation leads to decreased CSF drainage and communicating hydrocephalus. It is actually the decrease in the CSF resorption. Okay, so um, meningitis, subarachnoid hemorrhage, and inflammation, the, these three can cause the fibrosis of the arachnoid granulation leading to the communicating hydrocephalus. Next is the non-communicating obstructive 
uh, or obstructive hydrocephalus. So um, as the name shows obstructive, there is some obstruction in the uh, CSF flow uh, from, um, from the ventricles or any localized obstacle to the CSF flow. So the causes of uh, uh, non-communicating are divided into congenital and acquired causes. Congenital causes include the chiral malformation type 2 and the torch infection. Torch infections actually causes scarring of the meninges that leads to the obstructive uh, um, hydrocephalus. And the signs and symptoms in the congenital one include the macrocephaly, um, bulging of the fontanel, irritability, and poor feeding. And in the acquired causes, tumor, most importantly, uh, colloid cyst, and the paneloma, tumor in the pineal gland. It actually causes the hi obstructive hydrocephalus. And the signs and symptoms include the headache, papilledema, and vomiting. These are actually the signs and symptoms present in the adults, and they differ from those in the um, children. One more important thing you need to remember here is the normal pressure hydrocephalus. Normal pressure hydrocephalus, as the name shows, the intracranial pressure is normal, is within the normal range. Okay, so maybe it is, it may be caused by the impaired CSF absorption by the arachnoid granulation, not sure, or maybe a type of communicating um, hydrocephalus. It occurs in the elderly patients and there is slow enlargement of the ventricles that causes the stretching of the nerve fibers and the cerebral ventricle and interrupts the signal transduction. Wobbly, wet, wacky. This is the mnemonic that the patients with the normal pressure hydrocephalus presents with. Um, wobbly means that there is the patient presents with the wide-based magnetic gait. There is gait instability due to the damage to the sacral, uh, sacral fibers. Okay, so a urinary incontinence is caused by the disruption of the uh, communication between the cortex and the cerebral micturition center. And dementia and uh, decreased executive functioning is caused by the stretching of the periventricular limbic fibers that actually causes the uh, dementia. So the normal uh, pressure hydrocephalus, it actually leads to the ventriculomegaly with the normal CSF pressure and there doesn't occur the enlargement of the sulci unlike the hydrocephalus ex vaco. What is hydrocephalus ex vaco? It is the ventricular enlargement with the proportionate increase in the sulci. So there is increase in the uh, CSF here as well as uh, in the um, enlargement of the sulci. So next cause is the herniation. Herniation, brain herniation is actually a complication of the intracranial hypertension and it is the displacement of the brain tissue from one compartment to another in response to the increased intracranial pressure. You must know a bit of the anatomy. Fox cerebri separates the left and the right brain hemisphere and tentorium cerebelli separates the cerebrum uh, present above from the cerebellum present below. Okay, so there are three types of herniation. You must remem remember uh, subfelsine herniation, also known as the cingulate herniation, transtentorial herniation and the tonsillar herniation. Subfelsine uh, herniation is actually the uh, that this when the cingulate gyrus herniates under the fox cerebra it compresses the anterior cerebral, cerebral artery and that compression of the cerebral artery leads to the contralateral lower extremity motor and the sensory loss next is the transtentorial herniation uh, in the transtentorial herniation the medial aspect of the temporal lobe is compressed against the free margin of the tentorium and transtentorial herniation causes compression of the uh, cranial nerve 3 and that leads to the midriasis and that midriasis is actually uh, due to the unopposed um, symp sympathetic tone and next it also causes the down and out pupil due to unopposed action of the cranial nerve 5 and 6 and um, let me write it down cranial nerve 5 and oh, sorry 4 and 6 and uh, uh, it also causes compression of the posterior cerebral artery that leads to the ipsilateral occipital lobe infarction and compression of the contralateral cerebral peduncle that leads to the uh, ipsilateral hemiparesis. So uh, this was about the transtentorial herniation. Next is the tonsillar herniation. Tonsillar herniation is the displacement of the cerebellar tonsils through the foramen magnum. And uh, tonsillar herniation can cause the uh, spinal stem uh, compression and it, it can be fatal because it in it involves the cardiac and the respiratory centers.